Welcome to our study of St. Mark's Gospel. Today we have reached chapter 5 and we look at the most remarkable account of a man who came to Jesus. Here was a man in desperate need, an outcast of society, yet on a day, a day which we would never forget, came a man into his life, and more than a man, God himself. Jesus had come over to the land of the Gadarenes and he got out of the ship and what do we read in chapter 5 of Mark and verse 2 the word immediately and what does that mean? There was a man who met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit a man with a desperate need a man without hope a man who had been cast out by others unloved unwanted uncared for. Yet soon as he saw Jesus, he recognized in this gracious person someone who would not just understand him, someone who would accept him for what he was and who he was, someone who cared about him and someone who could actually do something about his need and meet his need. Does that not sum up every one of us of our need of Jesus? Yes, we may have known him as Saviour and Lord for many, many years. But there was a time, a specific time, when we came to know, to know him, when we came to receive him, when we opened our hearts to him, because we recognised that we were lost, we were helpless and hopeless, we were sinners without a saviour. And Jesus came and spoke to our hearts and showed us that we were sinners in the sight of a holy God in need of a saviour because the wrath of God was against us against our sin and cut us off from a holy God and here Jesus had given himself for our sin what a glorious day what a wonderful day when Jesus came into my heart, as he come into your heart, has the burden of your sin been taken away? Have you repented of your sin and received him as your Saviour and your Lord? Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in my heart for thee. What a wonderful and glorious day that is to everyone 
who comes to Jesus and receives him into their life. A day we can never forget because we were all rebels. And Jesus stepped in when he went to the cross of Calvary so that we could be forgiven and receive the life of God into our hearts. For when Jesus does come into our hearts, he comes in as God. He comes in to stay. He comes in so that he can live his own life through us. We have no rights to our lives when he comes in. We'd no rights to our lives before then because there was one other that was in, Satan himself. For all outside of Christ are of another kingdom and that is the kingdom of Satan. Because we can see that in the life of this man, this Gadarene. Let us go further into the story here, the record. It tells us he had an unclean spirit. In other words, he was demon-possessed. Oh, in these days there'll be those, oh, I think, I think you're mad talking about demonic spirits. But when we've encountered them, we know about it. I well remember the night when I was in a house. Yes, I was away in another country. And as it turned out to be a haunted room. And during the night, I knew I felt something round my neck. There was that which was trying to strangle me. Some demonic spirit. These demonic spirits are real. And it was the blood of Jesus which overcame that demonic spirit and the demonic spirit had to get out of the room, get out of the house. Oh, we know when we come across these demonic spirits, and it's that which God uses me to be able to still to cast out spirits. And I'm not ashamed of it either, because the works of the devil have to be exposed and dealt with. But this dear man, representative of us all when we were in our lost condition without hope, he had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Society in these days, through its humanistic ideas, looks to improve human self. Can't improve human self. It has to be a new life. The life of the Creator coming to live within those who will let him come in. Yes, they bound him, they chained him, but he, he plucked, he had, he had supernatural strength because he had supernatural beings within him. Oh, they're strong, all right, oh, these demonic spirits, but one thing's for sure, they know their place. When the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ is made known. They have to go. They have to obey. And no man could tame, to tame this man. But Jesus, in his love, in his compassion, came to him. And the man was in a desperate strait, crying night and day, cutting himself with stones, Oh, 
all people go to anything to try and escape from that which seeks to destroy their life. But there is one, and only one, and I am not ashamed that I owe my Lord and my Lord Jesus owns me. I know what he's done and I know what he still does day by day. One could meet his need and he was not going to disappoint. And he won't disappoint you when you bring your need yourself to him. Even when you know him, day by day, day by day, letting him do what he wants to do, knowing his plan. When he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. That's remarkable. No running, running around the mountains there. He had seen one who could meet him and meet him at the very point of his need. Cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus? Thou Son of the Most High God, I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. That wasn't his voice, it was the voice of the demons within him speaking. They recognized who this person happened to be. The Son of the Most High God, the religious of the day, couldn't recognize him. But one here, who was without hope and cast out of society, recognized him because the ones living within him recognized the authority and the power of God. Jesus had said, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. That is the authority of Almighty God. And what's more, those who know their position in Christ, that they're enthroned with Christ in the glory, having throne rights, as they have the same authority on us, as the Lord Jesus Christ had. Are you using your authority? Do you know your position in Christ? And he asked him, What is thy name? Oh, Jesus knew that there was more than one, one, one in this man. And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And Jesus within us by his Spirit will give us the insight, the understanding, because it is him. Not our human thinking, it's in the Spirit that we see these things. And you in Africa and Asia, you can see far clearer these spiritual things, these spiritual matters, because your, whatever your background may have been, even if you come from other religions, you had a spiritual understanding which is so lacking in Western society because Western society is full of humanism, full, filled with ideas of men instead of being dependent solely upon God himself and hearing from God. Ah, they besought him, they, these demons. They know that they had met their end. They know that they had met an ultimate of authority far greater than themselves. Yes, the demons might have been mighty, Satan might be mighty, but they had met the almighty God in Jesus Yes, they wanted to be sent away. And what did they see? On the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine. 
that we may enter into them. Why did they want that? They couldn't face the prospect of being cast direct into hell. So awful a place is hell that even the devils don't want to go there. But yet there are so many in this world who refuse to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord. And they will find out when they've taken their last breath what hell is like. Yes, there are those who seek to mock God. Those filled with human ideas and humanism. Those who rebel against God. Those who seek to tread down biblical Christianity. But God permits this to show that ultimately he will have the final say to his glory. Oh, the world might think it's going along quite nicely, totally deceived, totally blinded to what God's ultimate plan is to have a church the body of Christ, the individual believers, the living stones, the priest, the royal priesthood of all those who have Christ within their hearts, living his life within their hearts. And God is still doing his own work within the individual lives for his glory. And here was a man being set free to start on his walk with God, his understanding of God, his receiving of God, having his life completely transformed by the life of God himself. And Jesus gave them leave. Oh, go on, you, yes, he let them go, all right. And they had to go, they knew they'd to go. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd. What? They ran violently down a steep place into the sea. And there were about 2,000, can we picture it? 2,000 swine running down the mountainside into the water. Oh, what a sight that would have been. And there were those who saw it. And what happened to these swine? They were chocked in the sea. They come to their end. God had had the say there. Jesus has spoken with all the authority of God. Because he is God. And they that fed the, the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. Oh, what a stare there had been that day, that moment, when the swine went running down the mountainside and the man was set free, the man was transformed. The man's life was never going to be the same again because he'd met the one, the creator, the author of life, the one who is life itself. And he received a, a pardon. He received forgiveness. He received a new life. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with what? The devil. And they saw somebody different. But the thing was that they didn't like it. Because this man, what was he doing? He was sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Oh, they were afraid, all right. Because they didn't understand what had gone on. This man had been running around in the nuisance in their lives. But 
yet isn't that the, the love and the grace of God? And he's taken hold of the cast-offs of this world. No matter what you, you might have done, you might have been a murderer and an adulterer, a thief, you might have been the offscouring of this world. You might have been troubled on every side, in absolute despair, not knowing where to turn to. But here is one, Jesus, who will not turn you away. He will meet you at the point of his need, of your need, and he will transform your life. He will change your life. He will give you a new life. Come and ask him to do it. He cannot fail, for he is God. Oh, there's been some gems over the years and down the centuries. Those who looked absolutely no hopes down in the gutter. Yet Jesus has prayed them pearls of great price because he came to live within them. Oh, they wanted Jesus away from their coast. They were more interested in the old way of life. They were more interested in having legions still there. Ah, dead, dead and established religion is more interested in remaining as it is than having the life of God within it. By proclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord, that proclaiming that sinners are sinners, and there is still a Savior who will forgive sinners when they repent of their sin and receive a pardon from him and the cleansing of his blood and enter into the kingdom of God to receive a new life. Ah, Jesus had changed him. Has he changed you? This man knew he'd been changed. This man knew his life would never be the same. He wanted to go with Jesus. And when Jesus was about to leave, oh, he asked him if he could go. But Jesus said, Go home to thy friends and tell him how great things the Lord hath done for thee and have had compassion on thee. Do you know Jesus has had compassion on thee? When we do know that he has had compassion upon us, then we will want to tell others. We have a message to proclaim, because there are still billions who do not know Jesus as Savior and as Lord, who are still lost in their sins, still waiting to hear, still re waiting to receive the cleansing of his blood and the pardon from God. Let us wake up and give him our all that he can work through these bodies which by right are his and his alone. Because when he comes in, then we go out. For only God can do his own work. Yet he chooses to do it through those who have given their hearts to him. Have we realized that? It is God who does his own work. Are you letting him? do his own work through you. Goodbye.